Hey guys, welcome back today. Uh, not a whole lot going on, but I wanted to go over this truck with you. I've seen it in other videos a lot with the uh, projects and then in the background of others. So I was going to go ahead and show you this truck and show you why this truck is special. I've had this truck for about 10 or 11 years now and I bought it. The didn't look anything like this. So I'll show you a picture of what it used to look like when I bought it. <clears throat> didn't run real good. Needed some work. Um, you know, the injectors were completely hosed in it and the turbo wasn't the best and some odds and ends. But I'm going to go ahead and go over this truck with you and show you what, uh, what came about with this. This is a 1995 F Super Duty. Not to be confused with an F350. It is more along the lines of an F450. If you're an OBS guy, there's a... Uh, you know what an F Super Duty is. There's no need to explain it. Um, the difference between a 350 and, a, and an F Super Duty of this era, uh, the frame was a little bit thicker. Um, there was frame specifications. I have it somewhere. If I can find it, I will reference it in the video here. You're running leaf springs up front with a mono beam from the factory, and you have three inch wide leaf springs in the rear instead of a two inch if you're a cabin chassis. So we're going to stick to the cabin chassis specifications on these. Um, the 350s had a 10 and a quarter rear differential, whereas these trucks ran a Dana 80. So you have disc brakes front and rear on these with a Hydro Boost braking system factory, along with a larger master cylinder. So those were all differences from the F Super Duty to the F350 trucks. So these were classed a lot higher. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, a cabin chassis F-350 gross vehicle weight rating was 11,000, whereas these are 15,000. So to give you an idea, um, my super cab long bed F-250 weighs around 7,000 pounds empty. So if you add in the fact that, uh, you know, you do a cabin chassis with a bed and it's a dually, you know, you have a little bit heavier wheels because you're generally running a steel wheel. You know, your empty weight is going to be above 7,000, probably closer to 8, and you can only be 11,000, whereas this truck empty is right around 9,000, and I can be 15,000 loaded. So it's your same footprint of a truck, but you can haul that much more weight. So you have a 1,000-pound heavier truck, but you have a 4,000-pound more capacity. So these things are definitely workhorses. Um, generally... Uh, came with 513 gears or 463 gears. Uh, a lot of guys will say that, you know, it depended on your engine, it depended on your transmission. Really, it just depended on who ordered it and how they wanted it. I've seen five-speed trucks with both. I've seen automatic trucks with both. Um, the 97 trucks could get a, a limited slip 430. And that was 97 only, and that was an option. So that was a nice option to have a 97. And if I had a 97 and I was buying it new, I definitely would have got that option. But um, you couldn't get that in any of the other years. That was a 97 only. It's pretty rare to find those. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go ahead and look at this truck. As you can see, you know, we did a factory blue color on this truck. It was originally colonial white. Uh, I can show you the picture of this truck whenever I first got it. It was ugly had a long flatbed on it, and I think the wheelbase was 210 inches. Right now, the wheelbase is around 140, because we shortened the frame. We took three feet out of the middle of the frame, because that is a nine-foot dump body. So that was, that was a tedious little project there. Had a, a friend of mine at the time weld it up for me. He did a fantastic job. He's a great welder. You know, he did a, did a fantastic job with it. We got this frame within a sixteenth of square, which is phenomenal for being, you know, home brew. So shortened it up. There is a Ford document for shortening frames. I'm going to go ahead and show you where we splice this one. So it is spliced right here. You can barely see it. Uh, this truck had stiffeners over the frame. We went ahead and um, staggered the way we did the stiffeners versus the frame and made sure that everything was going to work with the cross-member locations and also the bed. 
The only thing you don't see on this bed right now is a strap. I need to put a strap on both sides of this. So you're also going to see we have a nice set of Alcoa aluminum wheels front and rear. And we have a Cervini's hood on here. And then we are also running the GM style mirrors. And another set of Baja HID projectors. So these are a square projector. And I love the way the square projector looks in these. Uh, I do believe they are discontinuing those if they have not discontinued them already. So sadly, we won't be able to get those anymore for these square headlighted trucks. But as for the GM mirrors, these mirrors were put on before they came out with the weld-in plates that you can currently buy. Uh, my dad's truck has a set of OBS Solutions ones, and it uses a different mirror. So these are the 03 to 07 base with the O or the 15 and up mirror. And then also, if you look up here, we have a set of smoked uh, CP addict cab lights. So those are complete performance. Those are the best cab lights you can currently buy. So these mirrors are a little bit different than your than most. Um, these are custom. I made these backup lights that are in here. And let's see if we can zoom in here and show you the inside of there. Look, you can see that there's a circuit board in there and everything else. So those aren't just your eBay backup lights that don't do much of anything. And we did some wiring in here to uh, have these as a running and also turn signal. I'll show those to you here uh, in a second. So come in here. As you can see, the inside of this truck is gray XLT. So the gray part was never part of this truck. This truck was colonial white and had a tan interior and it was XL. So no power locks, no power windows, no power mirrors. Uh, we have also heat in the mirrors, which I've added that. A 05 and up uh, steering wheel with cruise control. And yes, all of the buttons do work on here. And since, you know, typical fashion, truck has climate control as well. So I found a nice 40, 20, 40 for in this truck. Put this in here, found a nice uh, OEM Ford carpet. Got a little bit of wear, needs a good cleaning. I don't think I've ever actually cleaned it really well, but it uh, looks well in here that we, we use this truck. Use this truck a good bit. Uh, I just hauled probably about five or six tons of stone last week in this, and then also went ahead and was removing waste material. So we had to take that to the dump, but that switch I just turned on there is for the backup mirrors here or the backup lights. And I have a picture of those at night to show you what the, how bright they actually are, but they, they shine pretty far. That's something I'm pretty proud of. They're very, 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 very uh, intricate in how I did those. There's buck converters and everything else to run those. So like I had said, the uh, marker lights do work in those mirrors. And you have a signal in the rear here and your signal up front. And these mirrors, when you buy these, you either wire them to your turn signals or you wire them to your marker lights. They don't do both. So this was something that I did myself, had these mirrors completely taken apart to do that. So something else on the inside of this truck is we're running the newer style dome light, and that's a gray one, which sometimes is going to be difficult to find. And then we also have the lighted vanity mirrors in this truck as well. The only thing we don't have is the auto dim rear view mirror, but it's kind of useless with a bed in the way. Would like to upgrade this truck with a um, full camera rear view mirror eventually. Something else I want to cover on the outside of these badges. These F Super Duty XLT badges are very, very hard to come by in very nice shape. These are actually aluminum, and a friend of mine made them for me. Um, he knew a guy and had it done for me, um, and I appreciate that very much because these emblems came out beautiful. So we, they came to me as bare milled aluminum, so I took the time to paint and polish and clean them up and make sure that they looked as 
OEM as possible, but they look beautiful on here. So like I said, when I bought this truck, Colonial White, 14 foot flatbed, tan XL interior. Well, it was also two wheel drive. So what I did was I bought a totaled pretty much Quigley F Super Duty truck. It was a disaster. It had rotted pretty much back to nature. Bought it, brought it home, tore it completely apart and scavenged all the parts that I needed off of it. So this truck has been converted. This is a Quigley conversion truck now. Um, you know, make sure whenever you're doing stuff like this that you know you have all of your pieces and parts. So you want to make sure that you have everything you need here. So this truck is running a Dana 70 up front. The leaf springs are custom from Quigley as well as all of the steering, uh, the front drive shaft, the transfer case is even modified. But this is a Dana 70. When I bought this truck, it had 513s in it. Uh, 513s were a little too tall for me, so I ended up having the front and rear axles re-geared to 463, which is another factory option for these trucks, like I had mentioned earlier. We'll get another video side of this Dana 70 under here. You know, it's a pretty big axle. It's very, very stout. Um, I do believe they use Dana 60 outers for these. They are kingpin. So, you know, that's something that you have to watch is the fact that they're kingpin. So you got to make sure that they're always good. They're not just as simple as ball joints for aligning or replacing. I've never changed these shocks. They are the shocks that came on this truck when I bought it. So... I really probably should change them, but they're not bad, so I've been leaving them. And you'll see that there is no flap on this inner wheel well. So I have the flaps for this truck. I just haven't put them on yet. I also don't ever drive this truck in the salt. And I try to not drive it in the rain. So I had mentioned the transfer case for the Quigley. So the Quigleys come with an adapter for the parking brake. Well, as you can see, the factory parking brake is gone. I was having problems with the parking brakes. So vibrating, um, pushing fluid out, just issues upon issues. So I said, you know what, I'm done with this. Ended up making my own disc brake setup for the back of the transfer case and installed that on this truck. So now we don't have to worry about the disc brake or the uh, drum brake screwing up because those are $1,200 if you can find one rebuilt. So something else we did to this truck was e-fuel. So that's what those three studs are there. And we'll see if we can get the camera to see the filter setup that's back there. So I stuck my filters there. They're easily accessible underneath the truck. So we did a, a homebrew e-fuel on this truck. And that e-fuel feeds the uh, Rosewood 160s that are in this truck as well, since the injectors when I bought it were completely trashed. So we also have a um, SMB intake and a Wicked Wheel 2 and a rebuilt turbo with a deleted pedestal. So that makes this truck pretty reliable. It's got a lot of power. Uh, I've never had a problem with anything in the bed of this truck. I'm pretty sure that I've been overloaded a few times and the truck just didn't, did not care. So like I said, these uh, aluminum Alcoa wheels, they are brand new. They have never been on tires before this truck. I ended up getting a recalled set from a friend of mine over in Ohio. And when I called Alcoa to see what the options were, they said, we still have new ones here. She goes, we'll send you new ones in replace of your recalled ones. I said, I'm game. So Alcoa sent me six brand new aluminum wheels for these for this truck. And then last year, a friend of mine, a different friend in Ohio, um, came across a bunch of center caps. So we got a set of center caps for my dad's F Super Duty and also this one. And the center caps really, really set this off. <clears throat> But this bed, so this bed's off a 2004 F450. So as you can see, it's a little bit wide. So those mirrors are stuck out as far as they go. 
And that's another reason that we're running the GM mirrors on this truck because the factory recreational mirrors, which, you know, they're just a flat piece of glass there on the door. They looked right at the front of the bed. Couldn't see around it. I said, well, this isn't going to work. So that's why we did those. We did um, custom taillight boxes, had a custom or had a uh, fabrication shop near me, bend them up. I welded them up. They are to my design. They're as wide as I wanted them, as tall as I wanted them with the four inch round lights. And then a custom tail light or a custom uh, license plate mount there. This tailgate is a monstrosity. It's probably 3 16th steel and weighs 300 and some pounds. I have an aluminum tailgate for this truck, but I haven't been able to uh, get it repaired yet. Something else is fuel tank straps. These don't have fuel tank straps. Well, when I bought this truck, the tank was the tank skid plate, which holds the fuel tank up, rotted out. So we went ahead and at the time I couldn't find a skid plate. So I had straps made from the lo same local fab shop. They made them up for me to my specifications and they hold the tank up really, really well. Give me no issues. Bolts in with factory hardware. And then on this side of the truck here, uh, we have a custom four inch exhaust. So this exhaust is made by Patriot Fabrication. That's the same guy that made the traction bars that are on my F-250. So he made this, it's not pinched down at all back there kind of hard to see so not pinched down at all back through here at all uh, fits really really well in there it's very very tight but it does work and fit uh, we have the same exhaust on my dad's F super duty so like I said this this truck's gone through a lot uh, the bed was all rotted out because they soldered with it so I replaced all these pieces here on all of the uprights and on some of the front some of the front here has been replaced. I fully rebuilt the tailgate latch assembly on this truck as well. And then we're going to go ahead and round out the front here. So we're running a black antenna, black windshield trim. Those are off of a night truck that I found in a salvage yard, a Cervini's cowl hood, and we are running black door handles on here as well. So Kind of gives you the dark theme, but you still keep the nice aluminum wheels and the chrome in the front end, which is easy to maintain. So that's my F Super Duty. Um, you know, we, I had a friend paint the fenders, a friend paint the bed. I painted the hood and the cab and the doors. It was the first time I'd ever painted anything. Paint's not the best. I can't complain about it being my first ever job. Would I do it again? Maybe, but I would have to have the right uh, facilities to do it and not just a random garage with plastic. So, but that's my F Super Duty. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It wasn't real long for you today. I uh, just wanted to go over this truck since we had it out, just unloaded some stone out of it and wanted to go over it a little bit with you. So, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to my channel for more OBS content, 7.3 content, and a little bit of miscellaneous Ford content, since we're still working on some other stuff here, and will be, hopefully, in the future. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.